Hi guys, and welcome. My name is Josh Bryan. And I'm Trevor Fulham. And we are here today to talk to you guys about how to run a Key 3 meeting on a virtual aspect. Um, as everybody knows, right now we are, most of us working from home, not able to meet in person, but we still need to have our meetings as normal. So we have put together some tools and resources on how you guys can run a meeting while uh, at home. Josh, I think it's important to just start with what little does actually change when you do a virtual key three meeting. What what changes or what doesn't change with a key three meeting when you do it virtually? Uh, the the easy don't changes is you should still have an agenda. Um, you should still set times to have your meeting, um, both a start and an end time. You don't want these meetings to go on forever. Um, so yeah, an agenda is the big one. Okay. And what I think is probably the best place to start is just kind of like how you pass out that agenda and that information and distribute it to people. What is, uh, what is one of the easiest ways to hand it out to people where they can edit and make their own notes on it? Uh, the simple way is just throwing it into some type of Google Doc format, um, which is what we are showing right now. There's a sample agenda that I, you know we've used in the past for meetings um, in Google Docs. The nice thing about this is everybody can get into it. Um, even if you don't have a Google account, you can send it as a link that can be shared out and give them access to edit uh, as you go. Uh, the nice thing is people can make their changes ahead of time, so you're all on the same path for it. And then it does give you the ability to also take notes on it as well that everybody has. Um, and then the nice thing is you have this, you can save it, you can see versions of it, and you can email it out to anybody that may have missed it. Or in, in some aspects, if your field director wants to see what you guys have talked about, you have these notes you can easily send to him. Great. So before I jump into how to use a specific online software for doing the actual meeting, can you just list a, a few different options that work well for online meetings? And then we'll leave in the show notes links to all of these different options, including the one that we're going to use today. Yeah, so there's many options out there. We're going to, you know, we only have a few. I'm sure there's more you'll. Mobile, computer. Um, there's freeconferencecall.com, which is a phone number based one. You can set up a phone number, give it out to everybody, and go that direction. Um, you have Discord, uh, which is another newer chat app that allows both audio, video, and text-based chats. Um, and then there's a, you know, Citrix WebEx is another online video phone call with audio as well. I think it's important to note that all of these have free options uh, with at least most of what you need to do this, or at least to try it out, even for a shorter meeting, maybe a 40-minute meeting. And during this uh, COVID-19 uh, a lot of them are actually extending it past their their shorter meeting requirements. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a, a Zoom window here for you guys to look at. And so what we have here is I've already, coming from this home window, I've come to the schedule window right here and set up a meeting. It's a recurring meeting. Lots of different options that you can edit here. But the main thing is, is that you get uh, a generated per meeting ID. You can use your personal meeting ID, but if you do that, then if there are any conflicts in other meetings, then people will end up coming into the same meeting. When it's a bunch of meetings where people already know each other, I like to enable before host joins. If not, then I just leave that unchecked. You can do a waiting room if you're doing like a bigger meeting, you want to bring people in slowly. But for the most part, the defaults are great for everything you'll be using. And uh, a lot of the times I'll actually mute participants on entry if there's anything more than three or four people. Once you get so many people in a room, they tend to just talk all over each other on accident, and it just helps to just mute them on their own. So I've already scheduled a meeting. So we're going to go over to this meetings window here. And now we're going to go ahead and start our meeting. And while that's starting up in the background, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that invitation and send it over to Josh so he can join us on this call.
So you do get a few prompts when you go to join the meeting, but it's pretty much all done on its own. It does ask if you want to join with computer audio. I recommend that if you can, go ahead and do that right now. A lot of the free software isn't working very well with the telephone bridges right now. They're just completely overwhelmed with everybody using them. So now you'll see that I have my District Key 3 meeting open up here. Uh, Josh is going to pop in when he can. Uh, I already have the video turned off, but you can turn on video and you can share your screen, which is really helpful if you want to make a slide deck uh, or PowerPoint slide with your meeting notes and topics of conversation, or if you have details that you want to share with the group, such as metrics of how the district's doing or any of the other things. So now Josh is in the meeting, and uh, if we wanted, we could start the video for everybody, but we're not going to do that today. But now you can see Josh is here, and we can all... Uh, have our meeting together and discuss things. Josh, do you have anything to add to how Zoom works? Um, there's a lot of fun features you can play with uh, in Zoom besides bringing in people. Um, you know, there's a record option. So if you want to record the meeting uh, for anybody that misses the meeting, um, it is there as an option. And it will notify everyone that they are being recorded. So it will tell everyone right away that they're entering a recorded meeting to, to kind of go on that. Um, if you do video options, there's uh, some fun little predictive screen stuff it can do for you. So you can kind of put a cool nature background in and not have your whole living room or your house showing, uh, depending on where you're recording your meeting or where you're participating in your meeting. Um, so that's another fun little feature you can do as well. Um, and then there's also chat functions in Zoom. Um, so that's actually how I told Trevor I was ready in the Zoom was just having the chat function available where you can sit there and, and either talk to the whole group or you may want to just quickly send something to one specific person to verify information before you know talking about it as a whole. The other nice thing with the chat function here is you can actually um, upload a file from your computer uh, to share with everyone as well. So maybe you want to also share an agenda or maybe a, an image or something. That is another feature that you can also do from Zoom. Um, as Trevor mentioned, uh, this one does, you know, it says it has a 40 minute um, turn off time. Um, but what we've been noticing is during peak hours, so normal business hours, they do keep to it. During the evening hours, they seem to be a little bit more lax with it. Um, but if you get cut off, not a problem. Uh, you can use the same code that was given out to everybody to restart the meeting uh, as well. So um, it, it is definitely a good feature out there, and we're starting to use it on a, a larger basis. Um, I think right now the free, the free model can do up to 100 people. Um, I've been in meetings recently with anywhere from 20 to, to 60 people. So gives you some abilities. One neat thing that I learned just yesterday and wish I'd known it for longer is that when you go ahead and mute all your participants, like I just muted myself, if they have that window up, they can hold that space key to temporarily unmute the audio so that they can quickly chime in. It makes, makes it easier to keep everyone from talking all over everyone. And uh, I think that actually one of the most underrated features, I think, is that you can actually use this on a cell phone pretty effectively with, I'd say, 80% of the feature set that you would use in a normal meeting. It'll be harder to kind of see some of the share screens and the displays and see people. But if you don't have a laptop at home with a, a speaker and microphone on it and a camera, you can just use your cell phone and it works very well, I think. Josh, I'm sure I'd say in the meetings that I've been to, I'd say maybe 30% have just used their cell phones and that's been completely sufficient. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, every meeting I've been in has been a mix of cell phone, some type of app um, or computer, um, even tablets, uh, tablet devices also work great for this um, feature as well. And the nice thing with tablets and cell phones is they already have built in microphones and cameras where some people, their computers won't have those things built in. Um, so it is it does give you the ability to automatically get in and use all the features easily. And the, the last tip, I think, for anyone joining a meeting is that if you can have headphones, even if you use the built-in laptop microphone or uh, the cell phone microphone, it just really helps out a lot to have some extra headphones in. It kind of cuts down on some of the extra noise and makes it a little easier for everyone to hear everyone.
I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting. And you'll see that I have an option to end the meeting for all or just leave the meeting. So if I'm going to go ahead and take off because I have something to do and I want to go ahead and let everybody else stand in the parking lot and kick rocks as we want to do, I'll go ahead and hit leave meeting and then everyone can keep talking as long as they want. Uh, otherwise, I'll just hit end the meeting for all if, if we're all done and that's, that's the end of it. So that's in a nutshell basically how this works. I'd love to hear feedback from you guys on if you had any other questions. I know I'd like to dive deeper into how the breakout rooms work and showing people the waiting room and some video calls with some actual folks, but give us your feedback. Josh, do you have anything to add before we take off today? Um, we did a very quick touch on things, but besides giving feedback, if you have other resources that you think are great and want to share with everybody, let us know. We'd love to get that um, so we can also share it with everybody. That's what's going to help us during this time is anything that people know about sharing with others. Great. Thanks, Josh. And if anybody wants some sort of live stream with Q&A and we want to walk through it, let us know. We'd, we'd be happy to set up a YouTube live stream or a Facebook live stream for everyone to watch while we go through it. And you can put in comments and interact with us. And let us know if you have specific questions or if you want to join in and help. Thanks. Have a good day, guys.